Again, let me express uh, uh, our deepest sympathy to all those um, that were involved in uh, early Thursday morning of last week, uh, the officer involved shooting that ultimately um, resulted in the death of, of, of Aaron Bailey. There, if you will go to the IMPD uh, Facebook page, uh, you'll be able to see a press conference that was conducted last Thursday at 1130. It's about 23 or 24 minutes. I mention that because I think it is so important that you view that. Um, we're not talking in sound bites here. Uh, I think you need to view that so that you have a better understanding of how the process works from here on out and what it is we're, we're trying to accomplish as we move forward in those two processes. Uh, there's an investigative process and an administrative process, and that press conference, I did the best I could to try and explain that. And I want you to know that, that both those processes have begun and are continuing and are, uh, are, are in the process of, of, of conducting both those. And so they're running parallel and simultaneously. I thought it was important that the public know that right after that press conference, uh, we began a series of meetings with community leaders and uh, those people that have influence in the community and citizens themselves and have continued to do that up until today. During those conversations, uh, there were a lot of things that were identified, some key things uh, that I think mutually we agreed that we need to do a better job of, uh, both as a community and as a, as a police department. I'm so grateful and appreciative that over the years that we have been able to develop good relationships with our community that allowed us to very quickly uh, identify those people and we already had the relationships and bring them into the room and and start having those discussions so I appreciate those members in the community that have reached out to me and participated and uh, all the work that the men and women of the police department and the community and the mayor's office have done over the years to develop that that doesn't occur in every city we are breaking down those categories of uh, training transparency engagement and accountability into smaller things that we hope that we can take some action on. We want people to understand that we are, uh, we are working and striving to make change and not just waiting on uh, those processes to, uh, to complete. Um, in that end, uh, one of those items uh, under training was use of force. We have been working over the last year on uh, changes uh, in our language and use of force policy and have been looking throughout the country and have seen uh, some, some national considerations uh, on, on items that need to be in the use of force policy. We have placed that together and our intent is to bring uh, those same community members that have interest in this particular incident and, and review those and look through different and uh, allow suggestions and input. Also under training, um, we have committed to review the core areas of IMP training uh, including but not limited to use of force, uh, mental illness, and implicit bias. We're also working on uh, uh, sharing our training curriculum with subject matter experts so that they can review it and have input and have a better understanding of what actually is being taught um, compared to maybe what, per what the perception is. Along transparency, uh, we're exploring uh, outside independent investigation reviews of current uh, officer-involved uh, shootings or uh, in, in how we investigate those. We're continuing to seek ways and we'll continue to have conversations about making uh, available departmental policies uh, and procedures so that uh, there's easy access to those and you don't have to go through the department to get those. We also want to clarify that there is a lot of that information out there but I don't know that it's easily found so we want to clarify how it is you find those items. I spent some time identifying within our current policies uh, some of the statements and within our current rules and regulations that address some of the issues that we heard in those community meetings and continue to hear. And I thought it was important that I make those statements uh, uh, so that you have an understanding that a lot of the things that we're talking about currently exist, uh, but we don't do a very good job maybe of, of communicating that. We are dedicated to upholding the highest professional standards while serving the community in which we, which we work and live. We are committed to the enforcement of laws to protect life and property, while also respecting individual rights, human dignity, and community values. The protection and, persever and preservation of life is our fundamental objective. We will only use deadly force when absolutely necessary 
to protect the life of a citizen or officer when none other, no other options are available. The policy of the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department is that officers will only use that force necessary to accomplish lawful objectives. We are committed to developing a partnership with the community, employing creativity, patience, persistence, and an appreciation of diversity both in the police department and in the community. We shall perform our duties with an unwavering commitment to integrity and professionalism. We will be accountable to those we serve for our decisions and actions. We will accomplish our mission with empathy, compassion, and sensitivity at all times, with the highest regard for individuals and constitutional rights. What are the next steps? I want uh, everyone to know that we're committed to, to these continued discussions uh, with various uh, city, civic, and community influencers. Uh, we, will, we are and will continue to have ongoing internal discussions about our processes and policies and our training. We will continue to work with community groups to establish more transparent policies and to communicate where uh, those policies and, that, and those statistics and that data uh, that the community um, so often wants, put it in a place that's readily available. In conclusion, uh, I spent a lot of time thinking about this and, and I wanted to um, make sure this was clear. It's been my experience that, that deep valleys we often find ourselves in um, the present are often best uh, uh, looked at sometime in the future. What I mean by that is a lot of times we're not sure why we are where we're at and we try and make sense of it and I find myself and I think others in the community uh, thinking about that and trying to make sense of, of uh, where we find ourselves. I think it's how we face uh, these challenges and how we work through them. Um, and the difficult events, as we work through them, I think they are building blocks uh, for our future. For not only our department, but individual communities in the city as a whole. So uh, I'm hoping that we look back and we see the work that we have done uh, over the next few weeks and months uh, and see that uh, this event wasn't in vain and uh, that we have built a better police department, a better city, and, and a better community. I believe we'll face this uh, uh, event with courage and grace, and in doing so, I think we'll create character and opportunity. I want to thank everyone that has reached out and all those uh, within the community and the police department who have spent so much time and dedication in working through this and, and commit to you that we will continue to do so. So thank you.